It's very clear right now that there is a global sleep loss epidemic, um, and I wish those were my own words, but they are the words of the World Health Organization. So that's the state of affairs, that there has been a pernicious erosion of sleep time uh, throughout uh, the past 50 years. How do we solve this? What are the solutions that will actually reunite humanity with the sleep that it is so desperately bereft of? Well, I think we are not going to find one magic bullet. It has to happen at multiple descending levels. Firstly, it has to happen at the government level. I cannot remember the last time that any first world nation had a public health campaign regarding sleep. Now, we've had those for things such as uh, improved physical activity, for diet, for drink driving, for safe sex, uh, for drugs of abuse. But where is that public health message, that public service announcement for sleep? And I would be delighted to work with any first world government to try and implement that type of a public health policy and, and branding. Next step down, we have to think about sleep education within the medical system. If you go into your doctor's uh, surgery or you go into hospitals, you know, around you, you will see these posters that tell you about um, you know, better eating, how to lower your blood pressure, how to avoid uh, the flu during flu season. But there is no message board, there is no communication of the five or six steps to better sleep or the um, 10 ways in which that sleep will keep you healthy. And we should have that. And part of the reason is because our doctors are so poorly educated in sleep, it's not their fault. If you look around the globe, and I've done these surveys at medical curriculums in first world nations, most doctors on average will have only one and a half hours of sleep education. Now that's stunning considering that sleep is one third of the patient's lives that doctors actually see, but they only have 90 minutes of sleep education. So I think we need to improve sleep education in doctors, and then we need to help doctors and the medical system convey that education and the importance of sleep to the general public as well. I think the third place where we could see sleep being intervened on is at a community level. I think um, we don't have enough outreach, for example, in schools. I remember back as a child, I would have um, classes that would teach me about um, the dangers of drink driving or um, safe sex or the issues around alcohol use, but no one came to tell me about sleep or the importance of sleep. So I think within our educational communities, we can do a better job at having certain materials that are conveyed to schools and then conveyed to pupils. And then finally, I think it has to happen at the individual level. I think there is a movement right now where people or some people at least, can feel maybe a little bit proud of how little sleep that they're getting. We almost wear it like a badge of honor on our arms. And I think this sort of sleep braggadocio attitude is desperately harmful. It's created a stigma around sleep, and sleep right now has an image problem in society, that we label people who get enough sleep as being lazy or slothful. And we need to abandon that notion, and we need to let go of this idea that sleep is something to be ashamed of. Instead, I think we need to celebrate and embrace this thing called sleep. Sleep is unfortunately not an optional lifestyle luxury. If you look at the data, sleep is a non-negotiable biological necessity. Um, it is mother nature's best effort yet at immortality.